Hi, this video is about the biology and inheritance of blood types. So first of all, when we talk about blood types, um, you have to know some information about our red blood cells. And red blood cells are the cells that carry oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout your body. And on the surface of red blood cells, on the cell membrane, are, are surface markers. Uh, you could think of surface markers as sort of like ID cards. Uh, so when you show an ID card, um, you are verifying that you belong. Uh, where is it that you're trying trying to go? Wherever you're trying to go. Excuse me. So think of surface markers on cells, on red blood cells, and many other cells as sort of their ID cards to to verify that they belong. Uh, so what would what would not belong? What would be considered foreign in the body? Well, yeah, you guessed it, germs. Um, uh, we call germs pathogens. Um, and uh, we have white blood cells in our body, which are part of the immune system. The white blood cells are sort of like the, the killers um, that are going around scanning surface markers to make sure cells are not infected by a virus or bacterium, uh, et cetera. Uh, so these surface markers are very important. Um, if a white blood cell comes along and identifies a surface marker as foreign, then it will kill um, that cell or that pathogen. Um, and on red blood cells, there are basically two different types of antigens. Uh, antigens, that's, those are the surface markers. Um, so there is uh, an antigen called A, which is this uh, triangle-shaped you know, this is my sort of schematic, it's not the real shape, but just giving you an idea. Uh, so this triangle shaped um, uh, uh, is the antigen or the surface marker, uh, the A antigen. And then this sort of half oval shaped um, structure is the, ant the B antigen. Um, so red blood cells can have either an A antigen, this triangle shaped uh, surface marker, it can have a B antigen, this sort of half oval shaped marker. Uh, it can also have um, A and B uh, antigens simultaneously on the surface of red blood cells. Uh, and then there are um, red blood cells or people who have red blood cells that have neither A nor B. Um, and so that refers to our blood types. Either you have your blood type A, you have the A antigen, blood type B, you have the B antigen, blood type AB, you have A and B antigens, and then blood type O, you have neither A nor B antigens. So if you think about it, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how blood types are inherited. And I think the AB blood type sort of give us, gives us a clue about the inheritance of blood types. Um, I want you to pause the video for a moment and think through, how do you think blood type is inherited knowing that there's an AB blood type. That should give you a good idea. So pause the video, write down your thoughts, and then unpause it when you're ready to proceed. So you've probably figured out that um, blood type um, is inherited in a co-dominant way. At least the A and the B antigens are inherited in a co-dominant way. So the heterozygote uh, would be AB um, has the allele for the A and the allele for the B antigens. And the heterozygote is going to display both A and B. So A and B are both co-dominant. It also turns out, though, that it's not as simple as that because the O blood type is actually recessive to A and B. So this blood type sort of has a sort of a weird inheritance, mode of inheritance, it actually has two types of inheritance as co-dominant with the A and B, or co-dominant to each other, and then the O is recessive to the A and the B antigens. Um, so then, if you think about it, you can write the genotypes of A, B, A, B, and O in different ways. Um, so I want you to figure out um, how to write the genotypes for the four different blood types, for A, B, A, B, and O. Uh, so pause the video, and figure out the different ways to write the genotypes for A, B, A, B, and O. So, uh, you f probably figured out that A, B is the only genotype for A, B is going to be A, B. 
Um, but A blood type is actually going to have two ways to write it. Either they're going to be homozygous A, so big A, big A, or knowing that uh, O is recessive, you can have um, AO. And the same thing would be true for B blood type, so homozygous for B, so big B, big B, or you can have uh, BO. Uh, and then for O blood type, of course, then, you know, since it's recessive, you're going to have OO for the uh, recessive blood type. So let's solve a problem. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to show the cross between uh, an O blood type parent and an AB blood type parent. I want you to show the possible offsprings that give the, you know, the genotypic and the phenotypic percentages. So uh, why don't you pause the video, solve the problem, and then unpause it when you're ready to uh, review the answer. So the solution sh should be pretty straightforward. Um, we can write a key, uh, but I think the key is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, and then for the parent genotypes, we know for AB, the only genotype uh, for AB is going to be AB. And then for O blood type, uh, OO, we fill out the Punnett square. Uh, and we realize that uh, half of the offspring are going to be A blood type, and half of the offspring is going to be B blood type. Now I'm going to give you a little bit more information. So it turns out that the immune system creates weapons against pathogens or against cells that don't belong in the body. These weapons are called antibodies. Now antibodies, what they do is they attach to non-self antigens. And when antibodies attach to these foreign antigens, that sends a message to white blood cells that whatever is attached to this antibody um, is um, needs to be destroyed. It doesn't belong there. And the way it works is that the antibodies have a particular shape, just like the antigens have a particular shape, and they they fit together almost like puzzle pieces. So uh, you can imagine that uh, if you're A blood type, um, you're going to make antibodies against B blood type, because uh, according to the body, the B blood cells do not belong there. So we can think about this, think about the different blood types, um, knowing what antigens they make or don't make, you should be able to deduce the antibodies that they make. So why don't you um, pause the video and think about the other blood types, what kind of antibodies are they going to make, if any? And then unpause it uh, when you're ready for the answer. So let's uh, continue with B blood type. Um, so if you're B blood type, then of course you're not going to make antibodies against your own blood type, but you are going to make antibodies against the A blood type. Now think about AB blood type. Well, if you create antigens of A and B, then you don't want to create antibodies against A or B because then you attack your own red blood cells. So AB blood type, they're they are not going to make uh, antibodies against A or B. Now we think about O blood type, well, they don't have antigens. So according to them, A and B are both considered foreign. So they're gonna make antibodies against A and B antigens. Uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about blood testing, and it actually relates to the antibodies uh, discussion we just had. Um, so when antigens and antibodies are in the same place, um, they start to clump together. Because you, you have to think about it. Um, if, recall that the antibodies have uh, two places that they can attach the antigens. So uh, a foreign invader, for example, might have um, antibodies, several antibodies uh, tagging it for destruction. But some of those antibodies might attach to other um, antigens of other pathogens, you know, of the identical pathogens. Um, so you might get sort of these antibodies clustering or clumping together all of these um, antigens. So it turns out that if you have a lot of these antibodies and antigens, you can access, actually see the clumping with the naked eye. And that's the basis of blood testing. So what happens in blood testing is um, antibodies against A and B are placed on a piece of paper. And what happens is that you add your blood to these different parts of the test. And then um, you look for um, the clumping. 
Now, the technical term for this clumping is called agglutination. So in the blood test, you look for agglutination. So for example, if you're A blood type, and you were to place your blood on the A part of the test, then the antibodies uh, are going to agglutinate. They're going to start to clump together and um, attach to your red blood cells. Now you take your same blood and you put it in the B antibody well, then nothing should happen because those antibodies, those B antibodies are not gonna recognize your red blood cells, so no agglutination. Um, so if you're A blood type, you're gonna have clumping in the A well, but no clumping in the B well. So I want you to think about the other blood types. If you're B blood type, A, B, and O, where are you gonna see clumping and where you're not gonna see clumping? So think about it, pause the video, and then unpause it when you're ready to uh, see the answer. So continuing with the B blood type, um, hopefully you figured out that you're gonna have agglutination in the B well, because the B antibodies are going to uh, recognize your red blood cells, but you're gonna have no agglutination in the A well. And then if you're AB blood type, you're gonna have agglutination in both wells. So you're gonna have clumping in A and a B well um, because those antibodies will recognize your red blood cells. Then if you're O blood type, well, you should see no agglutination in A nor B. So um, that's how you can figure out someone's blood test is by using this antibody trick. So that has been the biology of blood typing, the inheritance of blood typing, and the testing of blood types. Thank you.